Hello everyone and welcome to The Good Old Gamer. So as you've noticed, this is definitely a different intro than my typical videos. And that's because today we are going to set up a complete system for Linux gaming. So if you're interested in testing this out for yourself, I'll have links down below. You can get everything that you need to get going. And I recommend trying it out. Personally, I've had a great experience with this and am trying to move my entire workflow over to Linux because of reasons listed in this video right here. So alrighty guys, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with the setup. So as you guys are watching here, we are booting in off the USB stick into Pop OS. If this little not responding thing comes up, don't worry, it will. It just takes a second depending on the speed of your flash drive. So it'll instantly pop up with the installation for Pop! OS. It's pretty straightforward. As you guys see here, I'm just breezing right through. Personally, I'm doing a clean install on a fresh SSD. And just like any other operating system, you create a username and a password. Now, Pop! OS gives you the option to encrypt your your storage device right off the jump. Personally, I'm not doing that, but if you are gonna have very sensitive data, you can go ahead and do that. And then there you go, that's it. And then you just let the operating system install. After the installation, you'll be greeted with your login. So just go ahead, click on your username, enter your password, and then you get to do the basic setup. So you get to choose how you want your dock to look, uh, workspace buttons, application launchers. Basically this stuff I just personally skip through. You can do light or dark theme, whichever you prefer. Location services, which I always disable. You can set your time zone, so this way it'll automatically update the time. And if you want to, you can link your accounts. And then that's it, you're done. It's very, very straightforward, very simple, very similar to what Windows offers. Now, the first thing I recommend doing is updating your operating system. So the pop shop will tell you that you have multiple updates ready to go. You can update using the pop shop, which is just the, down there at the bottom, and you can just hit update all. But what I recommend doing is going into terminal. I know you Windows guys are going, oh no, terminal. You can do it through the pop shop if you want to, but through terminal, first you do sudo apt update, and then type in your password. And then all you have to do is sudo apt upgrade and then hit enter. And then you just have to hit Y for yes, I want to install these things. And then that's it. It's gonna update everything on your system. So you can either click the button over there. Personally, I like terminal just because I can see what's going on and if an error does happen to pop up. Okay, and once that's finished, what I recommend doing is doing a restart. You don't have to, but I recommend doing that. Okay, so after the system reboots, now it's time to start gaming. That's what we're here for, right? We want to game on Linux, right? That's what we're trying to test. So just click on Pop Shop, and then you want Steam and you want Lutris. So just click on those and install. For those of you wondering what Lutris is, if you haven't seen any of my other Linux videos, Lutris allows you to install games from things like GOG, from Origin, from... Uh, was it the, the Blizzard Battle.net? Uh, I don't really use that one that much, obviously. Paul's going to hate me. Uh, but regardless, you can basically install all your other games. If you own physical media, you can install that way as well. So essentially, you have Steam and then Lutris, and then you don't really need anything else. Now, the next thing I recommend installing is G Overlay, uh, if I could spell correctly. So G Overlay has Mango HUD in there, and Mango HUD is basically Reva Tuner statistic server. So basically this gives you what you're used to with MSI Afterburner. I also recommend getting genome tweaks, and that's only because by default, Pop! OS does not have a maximize button, just minimize. And I personally like having a maximize button. So uh, I do recommend getting that one as well. I personally add Lutris and Steam to my favorites, so they're at my bottom, so you can go ahead and get to those easier. So then, like I was mentioning, with tweaks, just click on that, go to Windows, Tile Bars, and then you just have a maximize toggle, and then poof, look at that, now we have a plus and a minus. So I prefer that, but it's not completely necessary for everybody else. Okay, so once you have Steam installed and loaded up, what I recommend doing is going under your settings and then go down to where it says Steam Play and go ahead and enable Steam Play for all titles. This will allow you to use Proton and basically use any game that you want, not just the ones that Steam has whitelisted. So they're not gonna guarantee all games will work, but yeah, that's what we're trying to do here, try to figure out what works and what does not. So next up, checking out Lutris. 
Uh, so you can see here, this is really nice. They actually just updated this and added Epic Game Store Origin and uh, Ubisoft Connect to this. So you can click on that little person next to each one and you can go ahead and link your accounts. So I'm gonna go ahead and log into GOG as I have a huge GOG library and I recommend basically everybody out there uh, use GOG as, well, they're DRM free and you own them. By the way, links are down below for any games that are on GOG. They are affiliate links, does help out the channel. It's a great way to support, thank you all. And after you log in, just give it a few seconds and it will pop up with your entire library. Now I did talk about this in a previous video. So this is just super easy way to go ahead and get everything that you need. In fact, I would say Lutris is becoming basically like GOG Galaxy, what that is on Windows where you can tie in all of your accounts. They're kind of doing the same thing. Like I said, the uh, Epic Game Store login, Origin, and Ubisoft Connect, those are new. Now, before we get to gaming, I recommend going under G Overlay and go ahead, enable global. This means that any game, it will just go ahead and pop up. I set my toggle key to F4, so this way I can toggle it on and off. And as you can see here, you click this little button down here at the bottom, it's the complete HUD, and it will give you all of the information that's available. So this way you can monitor your game and your game's performance. So you do have to save and restart to go ahead and get this up and running. Now this is one thing that took me forever to figure out. A lot of my games would not display information and I couldn't for the life of me figure out why. What it is, is with G Overlay and the Mango Hood version that they put in there, they don't put in the 32-bit libraries. So just go ahead to the web browser, go ahead and search for Mango Hood pre-release and get the latest version. Go ahead and download the tar.gz. Basically, this is like a zip file. Um, then just go under your downloads folder and extract this. Now what you want to do is go on the Mango HUD folder and go ahead and open this in terminal. So this is going to be another one of those things a lot of Windows people will be like, oh, I don't want to do this. It's really not that hard. Go ahead and type in ls so it'll show you the files. Basically, you want this setup file. Um, basically, it's just easier to copy and paste, so that's why you're doing ls. So go ahead and get mangohud-setup.sh, copy that, and then what you want to type in here to install this, and this will install the 32-bit version of MangoHUD, is period forward slash, and then just paste in the name, and then just go ahead and hit space install, and then just hit enter. That's all you have to do. So you're telling it, hey, I want to install this, and then go ahead and put in your password. And that's it, you're done. As you can see here, the 32-bit libraries are now there. Now all of your games will pop up so you can monitor your games and your performance. So after that, do a reboot and then let's go ahead and play some games, right? So I decided I wanted to check and make sure 32-bit games were working with Mango HUD so this way I could monitor the performance. So I went over to Lutris under my GOG account and said, let's try some old school Far Cry. A quick note that's also kind of new that I've noticed is uh, they went ahead and put in Fidelity FX Super Resolution in this by default, meaning if you run at a lower resolution than your native resolution, it will automatically use FSR. So this is almost like RSR just natively built in. I wanted to mention that, and this works on, well, all games, because any game running sub-native res will be upsampled using uh, FSR. So that's really cool. All right, and here we go, we're loading into Far Cry. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead to the cool part, you know, when you come out to the beach. And there you go, so we're getting 250 FPS, something like that, so very, very playable. You can see the frame time graph there. When you see those little spikes like that, that is shader caching. And that is something that we will talk about here because that's something that you will need to expect. There will be a lot of hitching in a lot of games for a little while. Now, here's the thing, once those shaders are cached, doesn't happen anymore. So notice like once you shoot the gun, you know, it's fine. You know, once it does all the shaders. So this is something that all games will have for the most part. Now, Steam is definitely trying to mitigate this and I believe Lutris will as well. So that is something you do need to be aware of that you will get these massive frame time spikes, but that is just shader caching. And if you play the game for about 10 to 15 minutes, you'll notice that those will virtually be gone by then. 
So next up, I decided to jump over to Steam and try Crisis Remastered, which is a 64-bit game. And if you guys notice here, that processing Vulcan shaders that popped up there, a lot of people think that that means you're just pre-processing all those shaders that I was mentioning before, so you won't get those frame time spikes. That's not the case, unfortunately. I believe that's what it will become in the future, but for right now, you are still gonna get frame time spikes even with that. But I do believe in the future community uh, shader caches will be automatically downloaded by both Steam and Lutris. That's something that I mentioned in the previous video. But regardless, as you can see here, here's Crisis Remastered. It's up and running just fine. 64-bit game. You got your DXVK readout. You have your GPU readouts, all that good stuff going on. So I'm going to fast forward to some fun gameplay, especially the part that everybody wants to see. So here we go. Definitively, can it run Crisis? Yes, Linux can run Crisis. It can run Crisis Remastered. It can run it very, very well. Uh, as you can see on the frame time chart, you are going to see those hitches. Those are shader caching. That's why I said the Vulcan shader thing that Steam does does not seem to eliminate this. Um, but once again, if I reload the game, come back here, those are gone. Once they're cached, they're cached. And yeah, it's not that big of a deal. That's also the reason why I capped to 60 FPS VSync, because it seems to be less impactful, in my opinion, at the lower frame rates. But I want to bring that up so you are aware of some of the drawbacks with Linux gaming in its current form. So you will have to understand that shader caching is a real thing. And if you're okay with that, great. If you're not, if you're just like, no, I will never be okay with any inconveniencing, well, then, yeah, Linux gaming is not for you. I'm sorry. It just isn't. But if you're okay with dealing with some choppy gameplay for a couple of minutes until it smooths out and caches those shaders, well, then you can go ahead and get away from Windows. As you can see, it's just that simple. We did the start to finish install right here, right now. And yeah, if you haven't tried this out before, I strongly recommend that you give it a shot. Almost every single game works. I found a few games that were a little quirky. Most of them I can get working. I think there's only one game at this point in time that I could not get working, and it's not that big of a deal. It's a Bullet Storm Full Clip Edition. For some reason, just does not want to work, and I tried multiple different versions. But hey, guys, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful, please smash that like button. Please subscribe. Please share with friends, and let me know your experience with this. Um, so, alrighty, guys, that's really all I have for you here today. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I will catch you guys in the next video.